and welcome to the K Files. Well, we do have poinsettias on the set um, this morning, but um, very Christmassy. It is. It is, um, and it's time for us to really think about the families, the families, JP, that are going this this year are going to be without one of their loved ones. Yeah. You know, we talked about a case uh, last week for Middlesex. Christmas Eve of this year, I believe, makes uh, 20 years exactly, um, where someone, uh, I believe it's the Lynch case, where he's been missing for uh, 20 years now. Yes. Um, and you stop and think, every Christmas holiday, yes. year after year after year, that family's mind is, where's my loved one? Yes. What happened Absolutely. to him? Absolutely, and and we have to think about that. If if there's somebody out there that knows something about any of the cases that we have talked about this year, and and remember, you can go on YouTube and you can look up the cases that we've talked about. Look up the K Files show, and and you can look at those. If you know anything, please do something good. I hope your heart will be led to. Give us a tip. Give well. Give law enforcement a tip. The numbers on the screen that we have: Crime Stoppers nine seven seven one 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 one. We have text to tip. All kinds of ways that you can respond and give tips. And we hope that you will be led to do that to give somebody closure for this holiday. So. Um, Anyway, we're going to start talking about some cases. Now, the way it works is we have $15,000 in the pot. Your um, law enforcement, if you give a tip, law enforcement will determine how much your tip is worth. And we have paid out three times, I believe. Um, we pay quickly. You'll get your money in cash. You can't get any better than that. And I know there's a lot of you out there that could use some cash for Christmas. I mean, it's not too late to get cash for Christmas. So um, you don't, it's not upon conviction, it is upon um, arrest. So um, it will be given quickly. So please uh, contact law enforcement. And as JP, you always say, some of these cases, there's more than 15000 because... Right. Yeah, the governor's office yeah. um, puts up funds, family, mm -hmm. friends, they put up funds. You know, there are some cases in here where you're looking at $25,000 in reward money mm -hmm. available. Exactly. So, um, you know, you'll be doing something good. It's anonymous. It is anonymous, so please know that. Um, we just want the information. Law enforcement just wants the information so they can follow up on a lead, a tip. They need leads. They need your help. You know, the public is the best partner law enforcement has. Mm -hmm. Skeet was in here last week, and Tim Askew was in here, and we were talking about how the smallest tip mm -hmm. can lead to uh, solving a case yeah. and a lot of times when you break that one case you'll see where it's linked to another unsolved case mm -hmm. or another unsolved case and it's a domino effect and uh, you know a lot of people we talked about it last week we think are scared mm -hmm. or more reluctant to um, to share that information yes. out of fear but you know you can do this anonymously nobody's going to know who you are unless you tell it um, and get paid up to $15,000 cash. Absolutely, absolutely. So we hope you will do that. Um, and, and as you said, the smallest tip, the smallest thing will help. I mean, if you saw a car riding by, if you just anything that you think is insignificant may not be. You know, I worked so. cases at the sheriff's office years ago, mm -hmm. and people would start out with, look, this probably is nothing but and the yes. next thing you know as they start talking you're like oh my god and it let the tip that they shared that they mm -hmm. thought was insignificant yes broke a case help put the puzzle together yes. mm -hmm. well we hope you will do that um 
So we will get started with our cases. Um, last see. week we kind of we kind of appreciate you filling in for me being out last. Sure, week. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, we kind of jumped around a little bit um, and talked about the case, uh, the barber. Just mm -hmm. outside of Nashville, we yes. talked about that case. Randy Colgrove. Randy Colgrove. We because talked about the Lynch case. Because you had Nash County here, yeah. so That's you right. wanted to do Nash County mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of skipped around a little bit, but I've got it marked here where we can uh, start back up. Um, Melvin Eugene Avent. This case is from 12-29-1999 around 1.40 a.m. Melvin Eugene Avent, 19 years old at the time, on the phone with his brother as someone was chasing him. His brother heard him say to the person, you don't have to do this, before he was shot and killed at the corner of Looper and Mullen Street in Rocky Mount. We've talked about this case numerous times. Um, actually on the phone with his brother as he was shot and um, his brother was able to hear him say, look, you know, man, you don't have to do this. Right. Exactly. Intersection of Looper and Mullen Street. Imagine being Rocky on the Mount. phone with your brother and yeah. then you never see him again. I mean, mm -hmm. that's terrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if anybody knows anything, please, please let law enforcement know. Call one of the numbers. Um, that we have available. So, all right. Um, Ramon Elias Matute Ortiz. This case is from August 17th, 1999. Officers responded to the 700 block of Black Creek Road in Wilson in reference to an individual shot in the schoolyard. Um, very, very limited information on that case. That's all we have. Um, we don't have time of day, anything like that. Um, Ramon Elias Matute Ortez, August 17th, 1999, 700 block of Black Creek Road in Wilson. Um, it's kind of like where the near the train trestle on 301, mm -hmm. um, reference to an individual shot in the schoolyard. Right. Mm. Okay. If anybody knows anything about that, somebody knows something about every case. I mean, somebody out there knows about this case. No doubt. James Whelan. Uh, the James Whelan case is from February 20th, 2000. This is a case where unknown suspects broke into the home. Um, located at 405 Fairfield Drive in Rocky Mount. James O. Cotton Whelan, who was 86 years old at the time, was found bound with duct tape. His wife, Margie Amato Whelan, who was 73 years old at the time, suffered a broken hip and was transferred to the hospital. James Whelan died in the residence Margie Whelan passed away in March 2008. Which was eight years later. Mm -hmm. but bless her heart, broke her hip. Um, this was a home invasion, no mm -hmm. doubt. I don't know where Fairfield Drive is. I, I do can't not. place it. Um, but anyway, James Cotton Whelan, um, gosh, can you imagine 86 years old? And have somebody, I mean. Kick your door in and come in. Do you not know they were terrified? You know I would have been terrified. Yeah. But imagine what it does to an 80-some-year-old person. Terrible. You know, I've said this numerous times on the show. My biggest fear um, is a home invasion. I can protect myself when I'm out here on the road. I can protect myself when I'm, you know, out in the yard. Mm -hmm. But at nighttime when my kids are in their room and, you know, my wife might be in the living room with me. She might be, you know, uh, in the shower, whatever. That's when I feel most vulnerable. Yeah. Um, you know, door gets kicked in. Several people come flooding in. Um, that's my biggest fear. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a lot of people's. But, all right, now, I'm a little, all right, 
So unknown suspects, understand, broke into the house like a home invasion. James Whelan was 86 years old at the time, and he was bound with duct tape. Mm -hmm. It says he was found dead in the home. Mm -hmm. Of what? He probably could have suffered a heart attack. Yeah, I was going to say, did They could have possibly just... beat him. Yeah. Um, it doesn't If clarify... he's 86 years old, something like this, I would imagine, I mean, it would Definitely trigger a heart, a heart attack. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't say. No. It's not clear if they caused the death, as, as physically caused the death, or they would have still caused the death if it was a heart attack. Under the but, murder rule, if he suffered a heart attack as a result, of this home invasion, yes. it's still murder. Yes, and, and that's it should good. be. It should, and it should be. be. It absolutely should be. Um, but anyway, so <clears throat> if anybody knows anything about this case, because this is senseless, mm -hmm. if you saw anything, anybody going up to this house or any cars in the driveway or anything, this was February of 2000. I know that was a while ago, 23 years ago, but um, almost 24, but there, somebody knows something. They have bragged on doing this or something. So please help us out. You know, there was some discussion last week, and, and, and I have a different opinion than what Skeet has. Mm -hmm. Skeet's of the opinion that a lot of times people are genuinely scared mm -hmm. more times than not. Mm -hmm. I'm almost of the opinion, you know, um, I think a lot of times people don't want to snitch, mm -hmm. okay? I believe mm -hmm. that. They don't want to snitch until it's their loved one. Exactly. And their family member, and then they get on TV and yes. say, please come forward and share a tip to That's bring right. the person to justice that attacked or killed or harmed our loved one. Yes. And, you know, that's my opinion. Yes. Well, don't worry about snitching because, listen, um, they have done this again. Mm -hmm. They're out there. They have offended more than one time if they're still out there. Um, and sooner or later, it's going to get around to somebody yeah, you love. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. we talked about the case up here in Battleboro where there were like 200 people standing around yeah. and nobody saw anything. See, there's two cases that bother me. That case with that party, all of those people know. I mean, some of those people. Among 200 people, you can't tell me somebody doesn't know. They won't say anything. The case in Pine Tops where people, 10 people were standing in the yard. And nobody saw nothing. And nobody saw nothing? See, I, I mean, please. I think it's a snitch I, issue. I just, you know, don't worry about snitching. That's, Get somebody off the daggone street. Because it's going to be your family or loved one next, I'm telling you. It's exactly. coming around. It's going to come full circle. Exactly. Okay. Well, it's time to go to our first break. We'll be right back right after this. Okay. Welcome back to the K-Files. Um, we'll move on with our Um, this is a case um, that we discussed briefly last week with um, Ski, Letitia McNair. Letitia yes. McNair was reported missing January 17, 2001 from Rocky Mount. On July 27, 2001, six months after she was reported missing, an individual placed her severed skull on a grave in a cemetery on Browntown Road, Nash County. On April 20, 2008, the rest of her remains were found first parts about a mile away and other parts in a wooded area by a fisherman in the vicinity. The autopsy determined that McNair had been beaten to death. Letitia McNair. That is a shame because um, I spoke with one of her teachers 
and she's very concerned about this case. Um, she was a special needs, she was in special education class, and the sweetest, the teacher gave a first-hand account of how sweet this girl was, would never bother anybody, which is the way most special needs That's right. kids are. Yeah and never bother anybody, and she just couldn't understand why somebody would do this to her. Um, I've talked to other people who really believe it was a family member. Yeah, as a general rule, I mean, you, you stop and look at what happened at Nash County Social Services and things mm -hmm. like that. Special needs people are typically assaulted or killed, not by strangers. Right. It's family members. Exactly. So, um, with that being said, um, I think some of the family members have since passed away. And um, that makes it very difficult with this case. I don't see where this case can go if that's um, where the leads are taken, the Sheriff's Department. I don't know. They're not saying that. but. I don't know what can be done if they passed away. Yeah. So um, it'll be interesting to see if you know anything about this case. This was senseless to do this to someone with special needs like this, mm -hmm. a very sweet person. So if you know anything, she deserves for this to be settled and to be um, brought somebody to be brought to justice. So. Totally agree. That's right. Um, this next case is from April 17th, 2003. Joseph Mark Jones. Joseph Mark Jones. Officers were dispatched to the 800 block of Gay Street in Rocky Mount in reference to an assault. Officers arrived and found Joseph Mark Jones suffering from several stab wounds. Jones was transported to Wilson Medical Center where he died of his injuries. Mm. The only thing that kind of um, I've always had question about is it says the attack was on Gay Street in Rocky Mount but he was transported to Wilson. I'm assuming that must be a typo for either where the yeah. attack occurred or which hospital he was taken to. Yeah, I, I don't know why he would be taken to Wilson Medical Center mm -hmm. where he died of his injuries. So um, we may have to ask that question. That's a good um, one to, we'll see if we can find out and get that changed. Because um, Wilson also has a, a gay street. Right. So, so it's either so one in Wilson or the, uh, or the yeah. hospital was in Rocky Mountain. Yeah. One of the two is wrong. Um, Joseph Mark Jones, April 17, 2003. But we know that he was uh, stabbed at the 800 block of Gay Street. Right. That's a fact. Well, if you knew him, if you knew you think the person that did it, you know, then please come forward. All right. Um, Timothy Noah Hendricks. Timothy Noah Hendricks. This case is from June 12th, 2004. On Saturday, the 12th of June, 2004, Timothy Hendricks had just arrived at his home in Enfield with two of his closest friends. The three sat outside the house for a period of time before deciding to go inside the residence and cook something. After being inside for a short period of time, three males dressed in all black came busting in from a back bedroom. Timothy's two friends were handcuffed and struck in the back of the head with a firearm. The males then took Timothy outside and shot him multiple times. Wow. Now. I'm sure we've probably read this. We, we've probably discussed I don't ever remember this I case. I don't remember this one too this much. This must have been added. Um, Enfield. Yeah, Enfield. Timothy um, Noah Hendricks, June 12, 2004. 
Um, so three guys go in the house, going to cook, fix something to eat while they're in there, uh, preparing a meal. Um, three other males bust out of a back bedroom. So they were already in the house. That's what it sounds house, like, yeah. Hiding lying in wait. Dressed in all for them black. To come home. Had handcuffs. Yeah, they had handcuffs. Mm -hmm. Handcuffs. Um, struck him in the back of the head with a firearm and took Timothy outside and shot him multiple times. Which he must have been the one they were really after. He was after. the target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Goodness gracious. Just horrible. So you never know if this is a drug deal gone bad. You don't know if it's, you just don't know. We just don't know the motive. But if you know anything or you knew Timothy Hendricks or you know who the suspects are, June of 2004. Well, typically bad guys don't run around with handcuffs. No, okay. that's odd. The other thing is, what's interesting, and most people probably don't know this, but handcuffs have a serial number on them, okay? Okay. They can be tracked from the time they were manufactured to what department had them. But why would you have handcuffs if you've got guns? You've got guns. So why, why would you handcuff them? Why would you handcuff somebody? I mean, you're sitting there with a the gun. Yeah, that's... The handcuff thing is what's extremely odd to me. Yeah, the ho that's just um, out of place to it me. It is. It's, 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 that's, that's odd. Um, maybe they didn't want to. So the three sat outside the house for a period of time, went in, decided to cook something. Um, these guys are hiding in the bedroom, dressed in all black. Timothy's two friends were handcuffed. So they really didn't want to kill those two, right? That's they right. just wanted to keep them from fighting them back. So they put handcuffs on them. Timothy was the target, as you said, took him outside and shot him multiple times. So, so what happened then? Did they run and the two friends were able, that's the reason they know from the two friends, As they to were what witnesses. Took place. Mm -hmm. And they were witnesses to the guys that were, that's how they could tell that they were mm -hmm. dressed in black, they were in the bedroom. So they could tell that, but I guess they shot and left, so shot outside and just left. Your average bad guy wants to go in a house and out yeah. as quick as possible. Right. They're not gonna be in your house waiting. Right. Okay? Your typical bad guy is not gonna go inside your home and wait. That's odd. Right. Okay? Um, I mean. Then you factor that with handcuffs. Yeah. It's a very I, odd it, case. It is. I don't even like where my mind is telling me. It's, yeah. it's, it's kind of routing me. Um, mm. It's kind of. It's kind of odd. Yes. But anyway, I mean, if if uh, if you know something about this case, um, please share that tip anonymously and get paid up to fifteen thousand dollars. Timothy yes. Noah Hendricks. Uh, and this is a um, Enfield. This is a Halifax County case mm -hmm. from June twelfth, two thousand four. Sure is. Um, this next case is um, I'm assuming that's Julio. Julio Cesar Vasquez, um, 8 2004 officers were flagged down and directed to a person who had been shot at the 600 block of Fairview Avenue in Wilson. Officers located Julio Cesar Vasquez, deceased and lying beside his bicycle in the street. Mm. That happens so many times, people laying in the street or mm -hmm. laying in the yard, just, you know, and I'm seeing current um, you know, we're getting um, press releases from the police departments, sheriff's departments that just, they've just found a body lying in the street or the yard or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. And it is usually drug related. A lot, most crime is. Yeah. Whether yeah. it be a purse snatching or shoplifting or mm -hmm. breaking in your home, a larceny, almost, I would argue, almost all crime 
is going to be directly or indirectly related to drug yeah, because activity. even if you are trying to rob somebody you're trying to get money for, for drugs. drugs so you know drugs are really the root of a horrible horrible a evil mm -hmm. they really are and you know and and i want to discuss something when we come back um that's kind of off of this but i do want to discuss marijuana we had a discussion yesterday among some people that said the police department, sheriff, sheriff's department, they're just downplaying marijuana. They don't, they don't really care. Well, I said uh, they're having to fight the new fentanyl, which is much more dangerous. Trying to get, you know, if they stop somebody with marijuana, I assume they're going to, you know, do something. But I don't think, well, let's talk about it when we get back. We'll be right back, right after this and some local weather. Okay, and welcome back. We don't have long. We have long commercials, and we thank uh, all of our sponsors that are advertising with us. So that's okay. We'll put up with the long breaks. That's all right. So anyway, we'll continue. I think we've got time. Do we have time for one more case? Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll do another quick case. Okay. Um, we're going to jump down here to Ronnie DeMorris Barnes. This case is from April 30th, 2006. Um, officers were alerted by the public that a body had been located in an alleyway between downtown businesses in the 300 block of Barnes Street South in Wilson. Officers later determined that the body was that of Ronnie DeMorris Barnes Jr., who had been reported missing on March 26, 2006. The medical examiner classified Barnes' death as a homicide. Mm. Ronnie DeMorris Barnes, again, this case is from April 30, 2006 downtown Wilson at the 300 block of Barnes Street. In an alley. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is another one of those cases where you just find a body laying somewhere. Yep. And you're uh, seeing more and more of this. You do. You really do. An alleyway between downtown businesses and the 300 block of Barnes Street. You know where Barnes Street is? It mm -hmm. runs parallel right behind Nash Street. That's right, yeah. P.L. Woodard is on that street and some others. Um, so that's Barnes Street, and it was found. I'm sure there's several alleys on mm -hmm. those downtown streets. I know it is in Rocky Mountain. Yeah, Nail, it's a between thicket of buildings. streets and avenues and alleyways. Yeah. Um, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, if you know anything about Ronnie DeMorris Barnes Jr. And, and his death, please come forward and let us know. 2006. Uh, Want to do one more? Okay. All right. This next one is a, a short one. Um, Louis Chinchilla Rosales. This is from August 31st, 2004. Officers were dispatched to a shooting at 415 Winstead Street North in Wilson. Upon arrival at the apartment complex, officers located Louis Chinchilla Rosales suffering from gunshot wounds. He was transported to the hospital where he later died of his injuries. August 31st, wow. 2004, 415 Winstead Street in Wilson. Um, all they know is he was shot. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's about all they know. Don't know who did it. Time um, of day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And apparently he was not um, dead at the time that um, EMS got there, but... He later died after being transported to the hospital. So if you know anything about Louis Chinchilla Rosales, please come forward and let us know. Um, well, I think that's all for today. We, um, I wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I know you do, J.K. Absolutely. Um, so have a safe, nice, wonderful holiday with family stay warm and if you know of somebody that's alone an older person that's alone neighbor somebody you know pay them a visit take them a little 
something. A card. Just a the meal, smallest a snack, thing. That, all they want is just someone to fill a little void of time. Yes. And with it being so cold, please check on your neighbors, your seniors. Check on them and make sure they are okay with heat and things like that. So, anyway, Merry Christmas to everybody from the K-Files. Merry Christmas.